Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hank. This is episode 154. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hank. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building. We are linked up for this one. I love you like that, Tyre. Introduce yourself <laughs> to the audience. Hello. My name is Star. I'm not giving you all my real name. My name is Star Hart. I kill niggas running. who come on here giving up the whole government. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to just say Starheart because that's my name on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all, the, all the things. Copy that. Yeah, niggas come on here. Yeah, my name is Andrew Smith Jr. <laughs> I'm a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I killed them type niggas. All right, so uh, Star is one of the uh, one of the eight and indiv- nine individuals, excuse me, uh, with the podcast link live show. So Star was mm-hmm. at the first show. We're going to dive a little bit into that. You can still get your tickets now because the show is this weekend. The show is Saturday. Yes, so hey. get them tickets. Get with us. Hit anybody's link in the bio. Get your tickets now. In town, out of town, out of the country. We appreciate you hitting the button and all of that love. Now, uh, Star, this came from something that you said. We did the rewatch as a collective group of the episode of the first live show, which we're going to dive into. We call it a tease in the, in the industry. Okay. Star says something. And I said, hmm, let's write that one down because that's a question. That's an episode. Star asked, can you love the hurt out of somebody? And I said, yo, that's an episode. So here we go. Star, <laughs> episode 154. Can you love the hurt out of somebody? Well, I genuinely, personally feel like you can. Because I feel like it was loved out of me sometimes. Come I on. Now. Like, go, uh, give me a little more, Star. I'm about to. I'm trying to <laughs> word it right. So I feel like sometimes like it's almost like something... That made you sick. It still turned around and became your medicine. If that if that makes sense. So it's like, yeah, I might have made you fall, but now I'm gonna bandage you up, give you some Tylenol, put some ice on it, and the pain goes away. So I feel like, in my opinion, for myself, I feel like there was some the the love. I mean, the hurt was loved out of me because once I was hurt, and then moving forward, like and things progressed, or however it got fixed. It is like the good times started overpowering the hurt that I feel and it slowly subsided. I I feel like we all like everybody that has some hurt. Uh yeah. no matter no matter which situation is something hurt you, something let you down, something uh something got taken away from you that you liked, loved, or felt any type of way about. And so I think we all can relate on that situation. Now, uh, I'm glad you said what you said. Cause I don't think that you can. I yeah. think that we can. I think we can give it some Tylenol. We can give it some aspirin. We can give it some Perk Thirties. We can mask it. Not Perk Thirties. Perk Thirties. You know how some people be. <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple oxies. Uh, some people, not all people, is why we don't like to speak in generalities. Is somebody got like abandonment issues because their dad or their mom abandoned them and said like, "Yo, I'm gonna be. I'm on drugs. I'm not fucking with you." Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take these drugs over you. So then that creates in a little boy that like my mom chose this over me. So why wouldn't a woman always choose something over me? That creates the person that constantly feels like they can't be enough for anybody, regardless mm-hmm. to how much love you put on them, put into them, how much of, that of yourself you pour and tell them like I love you, I care about you. You can show them. They kind of always one foot in, one foot out because it's like the person who was supposed to give me that and show me that as a child, I can't get over it. Like, if my dad did it to me and I'm a girl, and if my mom did it to me and I'm a guy, then it's like, well, why would anybody else ever feel that strongly about me if this person didn't feel that strongly about me? Yeah, your grandma yeah. could have raised you and she could have been the best grandma ever, your big sister, your big brother, whoever was the person that, you know, still took care of you. Mm-hmm. It'll still play a factor, though, where it's like, I'm telling you and I'm showing you, we've been together for fucking 15 years and you still questioning, like, are you still, like, hesitant or you still, like, not all the way in? So I feel like if a person has a certain level of hurt, because like hurt can be a lot of different things. It's like, like I said, I think we can mask it. I think, you know, we can have some good years. We can have some good times. But like fully them, like just being like over and it's not an issue. I don't think we can get there. You you don't feel like that's situational, though? 
Because or even Every, look, if you look at a lot, everything is situational. Yeah, sometimes people have a deadbeat dad or deadbeat mom. And some of them go that same route and become a deadbeat themselves. But some of them, it's the total opposite. And they be, they're the best parent ever because they want to give that child what they didn't have. So I absolutely agree with that because the thing I always like try to tell, like I always try to put myself in the shoes of like my kids is 11 and four. I can't put myself in the shoes of a four year old. Like I don't remember four. I'm just sorry. Mm-hmm. 1991 is a bit of a fall. <laughs> <laughs> But 11, I can remember. You was four in 1991? Yeah, I'm 37. Young buck. Young buck. I ain't been called young in decades. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you try to put yourself in them shoes and be like, remember what it was like when you was 11. How when you was trying to tell your mom something and she wouldn't listen. Or you was like, mm-hmm. it wasn't my fault, it was the teacher. It's like, some people act like they was never kids. And it's like, yeah. you act like you act like you did all your homework. You act like you wasn't never lying, just trying to be with your friends. Or like mm-hmm. you gotta try to still put yourself in them shoes. But like I said, also the problem with that situation be like some adults will still be in the shoes of the twelve year old boy that got abandoned, and he's forty eight. Mm-hmm. Like some women will still be in them shoes, but there absolutely are people who go like, my dad never showed me no type of love. Like he ain't want me, and I'm gonna make my kids know that I was there. I'm gonna show up with signs to the kindergarten. Graduation, I'm gonna have balloons <laughs> and we're gonna blow it out like they get a diploma because I never got that and that's all I ever wanted. Mm-hmm. Or, like you said, the girl who watched her mom get beat up for years by whoever the hell was in the house, she mm-hmm. thinks that's what love looks like because that was what was love shown to her. Or, yeah. or she, she turns out home. to be the one that hits first. That's what I was about to say. Or she went to her girlfriend's house where, like, her dad wasn't doing none of that. And her dad took her in like he was her own. So she like, this is the type of thing that I want. Yeah, you definitely got them situations where it's like, I'm going to run head first into whatever I saw. Or I'm going to run as far, as far and as fast as I can away from that situation. But again, if you run as far as fast as you can out of that situation, you still got it in the back of your head, though, that that shit is out there. Yeah, it's a trauma. Yeah, it's a trauma, which then it'd be those things where we don't like to talk about that type of shit. You don't like to tell your dude that, this is what happened when I was 8, 9, 10, 12. This is why you got to have all them conversations before you get married and end up in a long-term situation with somebody. Because mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm signing up for if I don't know that this shit happened. You don't know right. what you're signing up for if you don't know that this happened. If you don't know, like, oh, no, nah, I hate the basement because my uncle used to be on some bullshit with my little cousins and, like, we had to pull this one out of there. and like, So now I can't have the man cave down. <laughs> like, yeah, you never know what people's situations be if you don't talk about them. The problem with these Jones is we don't like to talk about this type of shit. We yeah. like to sweep shit under the rug and act like it ain't happened. But if it happened, it happened. We need to like get that out there. Mm-hmm. I think it comes from a level of comfort too because there's certain people who were in my life that I probably didn't tell nothing to, but then it was other people who I was extremely open, vulnerable, transparent because I felt safe to do it. That's the thing, though, too, is you have to be comfortable in a situation. I can't talk about this shit if I ain't ready to talk about it. You mm-hmm. can't keep asking me, say we in a relationship and you keep saying, well, what was it like? Or what was it like? Or what was it like? It's like, nigga, what I want to tell you, I will just start talking about it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be apropos of nothing. We could have been watching the Sixers and I'd be like, so, yo, look, let me tell you about the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> but if you keep browbeating that person into it, it's like you interrogating me. It's like I'm on yeah. trial. It's like I got to prove something to you. And it's like, that's not how that works. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's a traumatic situation, you kind of got to let that person open up. It can't be on your time. It's not your trauma. It's their trauma. Right. Yeah, if you're their partner, their spouse, or their homie, or however that situation is, you going to help me deal with this shit, but it got to be on my terms. You got to make me be in a safe space to talk about that shit. Right. Especially, though, too, man, with this topic, hurt people be hurting people and don't know how to be nothing. But, like, I always say, like, bad adults create broken glass for children and the problem yeah. with the pieces of broken glass is all they do is cut people's feet and fuck people up like all mm-hmm. you do is go from relationship to relationship not knowing how to love or what love is or what it looks like feels like smells like none of that mm-hmm. <laughs> and all you do is constantly just y'all just scratching the shit out of each other cutting each other cutting each other and now y'all might have 12 years of cutting each other and three kids and now yeah. y'all just created three more people that's gonna go do that shit in the world and that's yep, the fuck Yeah. So you're going to carry that with them. Because that's what you're showing them. Yeah. Like, another thing we, we always do. I always like to, 
I don't like to put it on everybody else. I'm going to throw myself in, too. We always act like if you can remember what it smelled like in your grandma's house when you were six, if you knew, like, somebody had the nutmeg and shook it on some shit, you'll be like, yo, that's the shit. Like, if you can remember that from 30, 40 years ago, why do you think the kid can't remember it from six years ago? Right. Like, if they 13, you think they don't remember when you mm-hmm. used to be doing the nut shit to their mom or when you used to say the nut shit about their dad? Like, we do that type shit all the time. It would be like, oh, that ain't what happened. And you're like, so now you just gonna lie to them like they wasn't there? Right. Just because you be talking that, oh, no, they however old they don't know they do fucking know they paying attention they copying all the shit that you do and all the shit that you yeah. say and they have ears so even if they're not in a room they still can hear like unless y'all got soundproof bedrooms or something like that which so, i'm assuming y'all don't <laughs> yes, <laughs> they can hear the arguments the fussing the fighting or however far it go they're not the bickering soundproof. rolling your eyes and when, when you get on your phone you get on the phone with your homie she get on the phone with her girlfriend and then you talking about it again or you in the car and they're in the mm-hmm. back seat. Yeah, they, they, the air still work. Just because they got headphones on, don't them Jones is on. <laughs> a thousand percent. But it's a All shame, right. too, because I feel like kids, a lot of times, nowadays, it's probably a little better. But kids didn't used to have a safe space either to be able to express themselves. Sometimes it is a, the teacher. Like, just like you said, as us being kids, we, we were still people who had feelings, who heard things, who saw things, who were treated ways that probably wasn't always right. But because you're saying something about stuff that is considered adult things, you're not like you're deemed as she's too grown. He's being, you know, stay in a child's place and all this other stuff. And I just feel like it's it's hard for kids because a lot of times they don't have a safe space to express the feelings of what's happening all around them either. So if you got me in a situation as a kid where. They say, like, you being too grown, stay in a child's place, then you should have me in a child's place. My place is not sitting here while y'all bag up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. If that's what you're exposing me to. Because, mm-hmm. like, what do you think I'm going to do when I get into it? Like, you said, a safe space with the teacher or somebody else's mom or dad, and I'd be like, well, y'all don't do that. Like, I gave this example before the show where my man crossed the street from me. We outside playing one day, and I'm like, bro, you don't smell right. He like, no, the water got cut off. I'm like, what do you mean the water got cut off? And I'm a, we kids. So mm-hmm. in my head, like, the water don't get cut off. Nigga, you like, all right, y'all water ain't working. Nigga, we got a shower and towels at my house. Come to my house. We're going to get you in the shower and mm-hmm. get you right. Because that's my man. I didn't say that to everybody outside or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But if you put a kid, like, his life is, he's being put in a position where this is what happens. I'm in a position where this ain't what happened. Like, I have no idea what you was even talking about. Mm-hmm. And like I said, just all right. But can you imagine space. that he went back in the house and now he's fresh and like, oh, I just took a shower across the street, and she's like, you was over there telling them my business, and you get what I'm saying? It's like that's it's happy. So sad. But that's why you shouldn't put kids in those positions, like you said. And don't ask me to stay in a child's place and then put me in adult situations. Mm-hmm. Like I can't stay in a child's place if you've now exposed me to some shit that I wasn't supposed to know about. Right. Like. You shouldn't, my, this was like a thing for me, like once my, my wife had my oldest daughter, but we wasn't in a relationship. It was like, so realistically, you crack on this girl, now how are you going to bring all of this situation up? Because like, I never introduced her as like my baby mom. She was never my baby mom. We didn't have that type of relationship. It mm-hmm. would never be like, uh, I'm going to be with my daughter and I'm not going to come up with lies and deceptions to make you feel better about that situation. Mm-hmm. So because I don't want to fuck up my daughter, who's more important than even me, like, I can't put myself in these situations where I'm putting her in adult situations where, like, she's meeting this girl and this girl and this girl and this girl. It's like, mm-hmm. that's not setting the right example to me. And, you know, niggas do what they do. I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's your business, not mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you shouldn't, yeah, like I said, you shouldn't put them kids in adult situations and act them, then ask them to act blind, deaf, dumb to the situation that you put them in. Because you're right. the one who did it. They didn't ask to be here. You decided to have them here and then decided to have them sitting right there while you did say and were around in that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, yeah, if you got everybody's situations is different. So, you know, we ain't looking here to just point our fingers at nobody else because we didn't all had some situation that was like, mm, I don't know if I should have been there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, anything else you'd like to say on that before we move to the next segment, Star? No, that's it copy that now all the episodes are sponsored by 
Custom Hustle World. That is a Custom Hustles at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, jackets. Uh, we got the flip flops, four versions of the sneaks, the CH ones, twos, threes, and fours available on all colors up to a size 13, 14 for you big foot niggas. Um, <laughs> track suits, sweatsuits, collar shirts, barber capes. You cut or do hair. We can situate you all of that over at Custom Hustle World. This is the get to know segment where we get to know star a little bit better. Now, because we talked about off the top podcast link live show Saturday, get your tickets now, October the 19th. Hit the link in my bio. Tickets is only a dub. Um, what was your experience from the first podcast link live show? What did you like? What did you think? How did you feel about the show? So I started off being extremely nervous. Um, I'm also shy, believe it or not. Um, so, so I went into there like a little like with the jitters. But I felt once being around everybody and everything, I felt extremely comfortable. I was just telling Ty, I felt like everything went together. Like as far as the people, the panels, how everything was lined up, it was like fitting like the perfect puzzle. Like all the pieces was in place. I know like behind the scenes, you're always going to have like a, a hiccup or two, like not starting on time, whatever. But of, but as far as the people, the topics, the panels, everything like that, I felt like it was like the perfect puzzle. I started to vibe with everybody. I started, I felt after a while I could loosen up, be 100% myself, vulnerable, transparent, all of that stuff. So I thought it was super, super dope. And I'm excited for the next one. I feel one like everybody that, should be there. I'm also excited that, to see the video again. <laughs> oh, yeah. We we were slow rolling that video. We're going to have that video out for y'all real soon. Announcements coming. Stay uh, tuned. Podcast link lot. Podcast link. Philly page will have all that information for you and we all gonna pump it out on all our different pages yeah. um something that I did though was it was like we did the show down around my hood and I'm like you was like is this somewhere I can get something to drink yeah come on let's walk to the store walk to the store yeah. was like I'm gonna walk you because I'm gonna break the ice with you here I don't, right. that's one thing I never liked which nobody knew this because you know I tell people all the time I'm really good at this shit because I've been doing it for a long time that's why I call myself paid talent like we're gonna break the ice right here so that once I get our all right, I can get a feel for like what kind of joke can we go with? Where's the line? What's cool? What's not cool? Right. <laughs> did all of that on just the walk there and uh that like kind of prepared me for the situation. Like you said, you always nervous when you walk in some shit and you don't know mm -hmm. you don't know which way the bathroom is. Like so you always yeah. gonna come in timid and like I don't really know how this shit was. Especially when y'all did y'all first panel, I was at the door, so I was like, I can't even hear, I can't see. Oh, yeah, my man, scan this. Yeah, let's get those tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so the watch back was definitely, uh, I definitely needed the watch back. But mm -hmm. something else, this is uh, something else from the show. You said that you were raised in love on the first panel of the show. Again, this first show will be available very soon for y'all. So y'all can watch that in and out of the town, in and out of the country. You said that you was raised in love. What was the importance of you being raised in love? Um, The importance of me being raised in love is like, always knowing that like no matter the situation is oh you always find the good in it so it's like just like you brought up the um your friend not having water there's times we didn't have heat so it's like when we didn't have heat we had one space heater everybody's in one room but instead of feeling like we're struggling we felt like oh it's like a big family sleepover and making a, the best out of things so that's the importance to me it was like always seeing the best in things only thing is it's still a downside because growing up that way it makes me that way in life and at times I get let down a lot because of it because I expect that from everybody and they they don't have it in them so when I see people doing things that's not cool I just be thinking like why wow, what like I'm trying to find a logic in it and I can't because that's is not in me why so this, this segment is called get to know this is get to know stars not get to know hype <laughs> but something that you just said though like you can't find logic in an illogical situation like i say just, that all the time it's just the bottom line when um, people like that i don't understand this i'm like the because this person is crazy and you have to be crazy to understand crazy you're not crazy you're never going to understand whole, a stupid person if you're not just stupid. like like i said my man that happened when i'm like six or seven mm. i always been like the why not help somebody? Especially if you tell somebody you fuck with them. If I tell you I got you, then that's like the best thing you could ever hear. Mm -hmm. That means I really got you. That means when shit's good, I got you. When shit's bad, I got you. When shit's just mm -hmm. alright, when it's just Wednesday, I got you. Like, I really mean that. So if I know, like, if I see an old lady is struggling some bags, I'm a helper. Now, in the way that the world is these days, niggas might be trying to line you with that situation, so you gotta be leery of these things, but it's also like, exactly. that, that, 
goes back to what we talked about earlier. You get the comfortability from the person. You might not even know him that well. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, I told this nigga three things about me that I ain't even tell my own <laughs> like, <laughs> my cousin, my man, and then he don't know this shit. Like, but you find yeah. those situations. But it's all about like I don't understand motherfuckers who don't be like, why you don't want to help the next motherfucker. Right. My whole joint be like, I'm when I get the first class, I want to turn around and see my folks is there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to turn around and be like, I don't know none of these niggas on the plane. <laughs> like, right. I want to turn around and be like, oh shit, they go my man and his girl, man and his girl, this her and her dude. Like, I want to know these niggas. I don't want to be be sitting here by myself because we can't yeah. talk about that shit if you ain't never been here. It's just exactly. like I'm being copy. That's that's your shit. Hank. I don't know nothing about that. Mm-hmm. My bad. This is get to no stars, not get to no hype. <laughs> um, so because I was there and I saw your bio, uh, and you said these are all the things that they said that I do, and I know that <laughs> music was one of those things. Live performance from Star at the podcast link live show October the nineteenth. Get your tickets now. Who is your musical influence? Jay Z. <clears throat> He's this the is where you Star. <laughs> I love Jay Z. Point blank. Period. No wrong in my eyes. None. He, no if he wrong do something in your wrong, eyes. I'm gonna find a way to look past that. <laughs> Copy that. Jay Z is my All biggest right. musical influence. Yes, All right, he's, he's an influence in my life. He's an influence in your life. Copy. Yes. Mm-hmm. So this is another one because again, you got to pay attention to your guests and that long ass rundown that Taya had wrote for you. Again, shout out to my girl Taya. <laughs> um, Crush I Lounge. I genuinely do all those things though. That's what's so funny. Crush Lounge. Crush if Lounge. I'm coming down to Crush, what's the one thing I got to get? You have to get. Dang, I gotta think of one. I can't think of one. Give me three. I mean, the, I get you, know. you have to get a margarita. That's number one. That's my favorite thing to drink and my favorite thing to make. You have to get wings. You have to get wings. Best wings. You have to get shrimp. Shrimps, wings, and a margarita. Copy yeah. that. And we so have a shrimp, saying, we have a shrimp and wing combo where you get both with fries. Copy that. We call that a, we call that a plug in the business. <laughs> now, <laughs> last segment of the show, Star. This is what do we need to know? What do we need to know? It's sponsored by H two H Cleaning. That is my cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts. We're not handling a lot of stuff tanks. too. I'm a full time hustler. I got everything but work. Uh-huh. <laughs> Twins. We're not handling no septic tanks. We can handle your in-house situations. If you need some septic tank work, I'd probably make a phone call for you, but that won't be an H2H cleaning situation. Um, but we do remodeling. You need a tree chop, trims, grass cut. We got all of that work. And for those who like Crush Lounge, we do compost as well. We do compost, trash pickups, so if you food from your restaurants and your situations. So if you need any of that over at H2H cleaning on Instagram only, we can make all of that happen. Now, Star, the floor is yours. Tell us what we need to know. Anything y'all need to you know that, that we need to know about. Y'all need to know that a I need a nap. <laughs> I scheduled to take a nap okay. on Wednesday. So God willing, please pray that on Wednesday I get to take a nap. With that being said, I'm an extremely business like oriented person. Um, I'm a great mother on top of that. And everything that they said I do, I do it. And I'm about to be like him because now I'm about to start a cleaning company. I do have an online clothing boutique as well. So I don't got you you got that going on with the custom. We just sell from from vendors and stuff like that. But come on, give give them give them that information. That's, Girl, um, I label this ink is where, this on, is where, this I label is where you ink tell on us. Instagram, Facebook. This is the this is part of the show where you tell the audience everything that they need to know. So the long yeah. rundown that Taya gave, this is your floor is yours. Tell them you can download the right. song here. We can get you something from so, the boutique. Go ahead. Yeah, that the boutique unlabeled ink on Instagram and um Facebook, and the link is in my bio for you to click on the website. Um, also, at one point I was a manager, a sports manager in boxing. I'm not doing that anymore, but I still have my license. So anybody who needed a manager, I could do that too. Um, my album, Simply Me, on all streaming platforms by All Star. My book, um, Missing Persons Report, is on Amazon. Um, Star Letter, Brie Boy Hart's author. Um, what else? I'm at Crush Lounge seven days a week. Manager, half owner of the kitchen, bartender, server, Anything you need, I got you. Book your birthday parties for free. Get a free bottle of champagne. Bring out your friends. Yeah. If you want to find me, that's where you can find me at. More than you can even find me at my own house. 
Copy or that. restaurant also, depot too. I go there every day. Also, she will be at a podcast link live show Saturday, October the nineteenth. Get your tickets now. Get your and tickets at, now. Well, you can always find me at Crush Lounge, and I'm performing at the live um, podcast show. What two you performing songs. for? The, what you performing? I'm doing two songs off of my album. One of them is a song that's infused with poetry. The one, the other one is just a full hip hop song. Copy I'm excited that. about that. So, so you get you to get hear t- some of my artistic abilities. Star, this sounds like uh, you need a spotlight episode is what it sounds like to me. <laughs> um, she got a lot going on, Hype style, and we love to promote and highlight those things over here at the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Yes, but sir. that was episode 154. I appreciate y'all hitting the button, Star. Thank you. We no problem. Are... Thank you for having me, oh. and I appreciate this opportunity. I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.